Hi, this is Ron Nutter. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. Today we're looking at the PipLink B1 5G. Now we're going to do a little bit of an overview, but we're going to get right into doing a basic setup. And this time we're going to use a Wi-Fi connection as the WAN side of things. A little bit different, but you'll see the where we're going as we get started. If you get value from this video, please click on that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Well, today we're going to be talking about the PepLink B1 5G. And this is not your father's router. This one is targeted for the home and small office. And the biggest problem it addresses is if your main ISP or your only ISP goes down, what are you left for connectivity? Do you have to find somebody else temporarily? I, you know, how do you get this done? And this is where the 5.1G takes it to the next level and it can actually automate a lot of this for you. It has two RJ45 WAN ports, so you've got options right there to have a second connection ready. There are several of these home internet offerings from the different cellular providers and the one I've looked at the closest and we'll be using in a later video actually will plug into one of the WAN ports and there's all sorts of prioritization you can do. This is, is a lot more sophisticated than, you, than it appears at first glance. It has one 5G cellular modem built in, although it will accommodate two different SIM cards so you can switch between providers. You can also notice that there is a USB-C port up front. This allows you to tether your phone so your phone just thinks it's got a computer tied up to it. Well, it's got a little more than that tied up to it that you can use this as a WAN connection as well. You can even use your existing Wi-Fi connection or someone else's Wi-Fi connection as the WAN. So you can see this has really got kind of a Swiss Army knife approach to it. So there really is a, there's a lot of versatility to this one. So let's go ahead and get started with the initial configuration. Okay, well now we're going to get to the fun part and that's doing the initial configuration now, since i've already had mine up and running this is going to be a little different the only prompts you're not going to see is setting up with the in control part on the pep link back end but all that does is give you access into pep link so that you can manage your b1 5g from an outside connection as long as it's got some sort of connection to the internet now, when it comes up, there's going to be a sticker on the bottom of the unit that's going to give you all your initial passcodes and passwords and all that. Take a picture of that one or write the information down because you will need that. And then as you go along, there's going to be some things you're going to have to change. And again, you need to get that written down. Otherwise, you're going to have to do a, a reset to get into the box. And I've done that a few times and you try to avoid it if you can. So we'll click on the PepLink SSID. Now the B089, that number will change for you based on your particular serial number. Now it's going to time out for me because I've already been doing some work with mine. So it had a different passcode on it. And what we'll do is I'll enter in the initial code that's on the bottom of the box. And I'll enter all that and then we'll click join and we should get a connection here momentarily. You won't be able to get into your box right away when you first plug it in. There's going to be two lights that you're going to need to see on solid on the front. At least that's the way it was with mine. And we'll get into it. The IP address will be 192.168.50.1. And then it's admin. And then the, we'll enter in the other password off the sticker. I'm not going to mention what the password is online because it's going to be... It could be different. So I don't, I don't want to mislead somebody. So we'll enter in the initial password. Then... Let me double check something here because I'm trying to put mine back to the way it was. Okay, then we'll enter this. And of course, we've got to enter it again. And then we'll save and apply. Password's been changed. All right, now I'm going to leave the SSID set up like this for right now. You can change that. And then we'll enter in a new pat. They say password, passphrase, password. It's, you know, as long as you know this, this is what you do to 
control access to it. And we'll change that. We'll save and apply. Okay, we got a mismatch. Obviously, I can't type. All right, we'll try it one more time here. Okay, it's happy. Now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to lose our connection. So we're going to go ahead, turn off our Wi-Fi for just a second here. And once the box has a, ten has a chance to come back up, under its own configure, you're going to see the lights going on and off while it's coming back online. Beauty of the B1 or the B15G, and the only difference between the two is the 5G has the cell modem in it, is you have the ability to either through an attached RG45 LAN port or you can configure this over a Wi Fi. So that really is, I mean, you, you can't make it much better than that. So let's go ahead and we'll turn Wi Fi back on. And it should come back up here. It's going to take it a second to realize that it tried to use the last passphrase I put in, which obviously is not going to work at this point because we've changed it. Okay, there we go. It just took a while for to realize that the password has changed. What happens? Okay, connection was interrupted. All right, we've just changed the password. And now we're in. So really, it you can't be any easier than that and there's quite a bit in here we're going to look through just kind of a general tour of the interface now here's the secret sauce on the pep link you can have two WAN connections actually there's a third one you can turn up if and this is the hardware ports there's a license you can get from pep link to turn one of the LAN ports into a WAN port I don't know that you're ever going to need that, but it's an option. Now, you have cellular as an option, and that they've got it set up under priority two. So priority one is the ones it's always going to try to use first. If one or both or whatever you've got set up for your WAN connection, if both of those fail, then it's going to go down to priority two. You can even have priority three, and then the ones down here are disabled or ready to be used, but you've just got to you know, slide them up or move them in, or you can have just one thing under priority one and make everything else a manual switch. You know, you can change your router IP address for right now. I'm leaving that alone. And there's the access point configurations. Now, the one thing I don't, I can't do on the way it's currently set up is they've got steering enabled and you can't turn that off. Now, steering is where you go to, if a device comes in on 2.4, the PEP link will sit there and say, hey, I've got a 5 gig connection. Well, I may not want that device to go to 5 gig. There's no way to disable steering. Hopefully in a future code version, that will be changed. Now, we're not going to get into speed fusion. That's where you can... Uh, get into some really sophisticated access. You can bond multiple WAN links together so you can get an, an aggregate of all the WAN connections you've got and your load balancing over the ones you got set up. So if one drops out, your process just slows down a little bit, but you're still up and running. And especially for remote offices where you may not have an IT person on hand is the way to go. Now, with network, there's all sorts of things that we can get into here. I'm not going to start those right now, but just to kind of give you a tour of what can be done, and this is where you really can start digging under the hood is when you get into the advanced section. Now, this is the nice thing about PepLink is it has a wireless LAN controller built in. Now, it has an integrated AP, but you can get other APs that will plug into this through a wired connection so you can have a managed access point configuration and have the best of both worlds because in normally in the in the business or commercial world you get into wireless sand controller you're talking some major money and that's just to get the controller but this is an option here and it's going to be one that may be worth looking at for you with system this is where we'll do some things such as we'll manage firmware, and if we go to check for firmware, okay, it's obviously, well, we can't do anything because we don't have a WAN connection. That's So that's to be expected. So this really is, you know, you're up and you're going, 
but now the next step is going to be setting up a WAN connection. Well, now that we've got the, the basics done in terms of you've gotten your password to access the PEP link change, you've got your LAN side of Wi-Fi up and running. Now we're going to get the WAN side. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to move all the WAN connections that are priority one down to disable just to keep them from possibly activating where then we're going to move cellular down as well just to, just to try to you know get things from a controlled standpoint now we've got two options for a wi-fi as WAN. we've got 2.4 and 5 gig now in my case my pep link is on the other side of the house from where my internet connection is so to make sure that i can get a good connection and to not try to overdrive the connection with what's existing on there I'm going to do Wi-Fi under 2.4. We'll put that up at priority one. Now it's in the process of enabling and it will take it just a little bit to figure out what's going on here because it's got to enable it and it's going to do a scan. And let's see if we are to a point where we can do something. Okay, it hasn't found the Wi-Fi network yet. It's still in the process of finding out what's going on. So let's go back here okay there we go it took it just a second uh it's amazing you know when you want things now so what we'll do here is we'll go down to where my wireless is and we'll click on connect and then we'll enter in the shared key And then we'll click connect. And okay, so it's going to do it on channel six, so that's that's fine. And then we'll click on connect. Yes, we want to connect. And then we'll click close, and it, it'll take it just a little bit to come up for the first time because it's got to go out and find now what it initially discovered and get logged in and this is the part that can take a little while so this is connecting that's good so there's the the signal strength so it's got connected to it uh, and there is the ip address on well it's the wan for the pep link but it is now, the, this address is going to be on your existing local area network, but the, behind the PEP link, it's actually going to be this. So that's fine, just so that you kind of get a sense for what's going on. Now, at this point, all we need to do to check things is we'll go out and just go to a website we haven't gone to before so that it's not in the browser cache. Now, it may seem a little bit slow. Of course, realize you're coming in on 5 gig and the box is sending it back out on 2.4. So there's going to be some slowness at times. And part of this is going to depend on your existing ISP. But at this point, this is, you know, this is up and running. It's not fancy. We haven't turned up a lot of the features that we will at a later point. Now, something I would recommend doing is anytime you make changes to the box, go into system and configuration and download the settings. So if something happens and you have to reconfigure the box, that you've got it from a point where you last made changes to it. So you don't have to manually re-enter everything. So this is something anytime you make changes, I would suggest multiple steps as far as number one download the configuration before you make changes make your changes verify that they're doing what you want and then make another backup to cover the delta between those changes so that you can you've got multiple restore points and you just need to name them something that sounds familiar or put a date and the change that was made and that way if something happens you're set ready to go in terms of getting back up and running. Now, if we go to status, this is where you can see what's going on. You can get into your MAC addresses. 
Now, Ethernet ports, we're not doing anything to them at this point. Active sessions, this shows you what it sees going out through the firewall. And client list, it should only see one thing, you know, which is my MacBook. You've got routing protocols to deal with here. Now, they put RIP in here. I have never seen anybody who has implemented RIP. But from a small business standpoint, or if you're going this, looking at this as an enterprise option for connectivity, they support OSPF and BGP. And that says how serious they are about doing it. You can also look at the quality of your WAN connection. And this point, we'll go down to Wi-Fi's WAN on 2.4. And this will let you see what's going on. And you just get a sense for how things are working. And in usage reports, we'll go to real time. And of course, we just got it up a few minutes ago, so it's not going to have a whole lot of information to deal with. But this is something that will get you started. There is a lot to do here. So there's going to be a whole series of videos I'll be coming out with to show you what it's possible of. And this is something, whether it's for home, if you're running your business from home, even larger than that, this box has a lot to offer. It's very versatile and it's also economical in terms of price versus performance. And you don't have to go get a bank loan for it. If you've received value from this video, I'd appreciate your clicking the like button. Please click on the subscribe button for notifications when new content is released. I plan on posting new content about once a week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.